Facial steamers are one of the most used and most loved tools in the treatment room. We offer many awesome facial steamers. So this video will provide you with some tips and tricks to help you get the most out of your steamer and extend its life. Before jumping into the tips, we want to mention that if you order one of our units, please hold on to your original packaging at least until you've tested all the functions of your unit. Once you confirm everything is working properly, we recommend keeping the packaging for the duration of your warranty period. However, if you don't have space, it's fine to dispose of the packaging after you've tested all the functions. Once you have your steamer set up, you'll want to fill the beaker to the fill line with distilled water. You can add water from the top of the steamer. There's no need to remove the beaker in order to fill it with water. It's best to fill the beaker with distilled water because distilled water has virtually no harsh minerals in it. That being said, some brands of distilled water aren't recognized by our steamer's water sensors. If you have distilled water inside but the steamer is shutting off or beeping, we recommend emptying the beaker and trying a different brand of distilled water. If a second brand of distilled water is not recognized, then we recommend using regular tap water. Using regular tap water is perfectly fine for our steamers. If you have tap water in the beaker and it's still not sensing the water, you can give us a call and we can troubleshoot further with you. If you want to add herbs or essential oils, you can do so in a couple of ways. Just be sure to check with your client to make sure that they want the herbs and oils during their treatment. First off, you don't want to put any oils or herbs directly into the water. If your steamer comes with an herbs basket like this or like this, you can put your herbs into a small tea bag and place the tea bag inside the herbs basket. For essential oils, you can put a cotton ball into the herbs basket and then put a few drops of oil onto the cotton ball. Then just put the basket back and close the lid. One last thing about herbs baskets, if your unit's herbs basket is like this, it's helpful to remove the basket when you're filling the unit with water. If the basket is in, there's a chance that the water can hit it and splash up, making the top of the steamer wet. If your unit doesn't have an herbs basket, you may still be able to use essential oils. Our steamers that have this type of head have a little piece of cotton hidden here. You can drop some essential oils on it and put the cotton back. Make sure to change the cotton often. You can purchase strips of cotton and cut them to the right size. Some of our other steamers come with small pieces of cotton at the end of the steamer arm nozzle. If yours has this cotton, you can put a few drops of essential oil on the cotton and put it back into place. If you're using this type of steamer a lot throughout the day, you'll want to keep an eye on the cotton and change it whenever it gets very wet. The last way you can use essential oils is by putting your oil on a cotton ball and then securing it in the steamer nozzle like this. It's important to note that the cotton ball should not be in front of the hole where the steam comes out. You don't want to block the steam from coming out as this can damage the unit. Once you have your water and herbs or oil ready, it's time to bring the water to a boil. On steamers with manual timers like this, to get the water boiling, all you need to do is have it plugged in and turn the timer past zero. This will activate the heating coil and the water will begin heating up. The water usually takes 10 minutes or less to boil. For digital steamers, make sure it's plugged in and switched on. Then hit the vapor button and make sure that the energy level is to the highest setting. Having the energy at the highest setting will help the water boil fastest. Also make sure that the timer is greater than zero. If the energy level or timer are at zero, the heating element will turn off. Manual and digital timer steamers vary in a couple of ways. With manual timer steamers, you will hear a very quiet ticking sound as the timer is running. When the timer reaches zero, a bell will ring and the unit will turn off. With digital steamers, the timer is silent during a treatment except when it reaches zero. Then there will usually be a beep or a few beeps. The other difference is that digital timer steamers allow you to adjust the intensity level of the steam, whereas manual steamers only have one level of intensity that cannot be adjusted. Once steam is coming out of your steamer, you have the option to switch the ozone button on. Ozone not only makes the steam easier to see, but it also helps increase oxygenation, remove toxins from the skin, and more. Whether you choose to use ozone or not, it's important that you keep the steamer nozzle at least 12 inches away from your client's skin at all times. Steam is extremely hot, so you want to make sure that the nozzle is far enough away so that the steam can be cooled a little by the air before it reaches your client. Be sure to check with your client to make sure they are comfortable with the temperature of the steam and adjust accordingly. You also want to make sure that the steamer nozzle is pointed in such a way that it's not going directly up your client's nose. This can be uncomfortable and it can make it difficult for your client to breathe. The length of time that you use the steamer for a client should not exceed 10 minutes. Using a steamer for too long can irritate the skin, and no one wants that. If you need to add water but the water inside is boiling, we recommend first shutting off the steamer and letting it cool down for a couple of minutes. 
Trying to open the top when the water inside is boiling can cause steam to come out the top. The hot steam could burn your skin. And finally, make sure that the water that you add isn't cold water. Adding cold water to a hot beaker can cause damage to the beaker. Maintaining your steamer is quite easy and it will help increase the longevity of your unit. Each day when your last treatment is done, you'll want to turn off your steamer and let it cool down for at least 15 minutes. Once the beaker is cool enough to touch, you can remove it and dump out any excess water. You can clean the beaker and gasket with clean tap water and a mild detergent. Be careful when cleaning the gasket so it doesn't get torn. Leave the beaker and rubber gasket somewhere that they can dry overnight. Keeping the beaker off overnight also allows the internal components of the steamer to dry as well. The following morning, make sure to put the rubber gasket back on the beaker. Never use the steamer without the rubber gasket on. Then you can reattach the beaker. Make sure the beaker is flush in its spot before securing it into place. We recommend cleaning your steamer about once a month if it's used frequently. However, if you only use it occasionally, you can clean it once every couple of months. To clean the steamer, you need white vinegar and distilled water. Fill the beaker with a mixture of one part vinegar to three parts water. Turn the steamer on and bring the water to a boil. Once the steam is coming out, let it run for at least five minutes. Then turn the steamer off and let it cool down for about 15 minutes or until the beaker is cool enough to be removed. Remove the beaker, dump out the vinegar water and clean the beaker. Then replace the beaker and add distilled water only. Then turn the steamer on and bring the water to a boil. Once the steam is coming out, let it run for at least 5 minutes. This will flush out any vinegar that was inside the steamer. After it's run for at least 5 minutes, you can turn it off. Now the steamer is sparkling clean, ready for your next treatment. Thank you so much for taking the time today to learn about our steamers. Now you're ready to use and take care of your steamer for many years to come.